First, let's talk about supplies. I have provided resources for supplies in the downloadable PDF. Since we are dyeing with fiber reactive dyes, we need to use natural fibers, including 100% cotton, linen, rayon, or silk. This was my very first ice dyed piece. I call this Mayo's Garden, which is named after my grandmother. It is a piece of cheap, cheap, cheap muslin. I dyed quite a bit of cheap muslin before I moved up to better fabric. Muslin and other fabric can be found at local fabric stores or online. But it's not just about dyeing fabric. This bandana was fun to dive and to give away. I also love dyeing shirts, a great way to advertise your art, and you always receive lots of compliments when you wear them. Ready-made aprons are also fun to dye, and if you like to sew, you can whip one up in a flash. But also think about thrift stores. I'm always checking out the stores for white or off-white, even light pink or light yellow shirts. This is one of the many I've dyed. Also at thrift stores, you can find doilies, tablecloths, napkins, and other clothing. Just make sure it's 100% cotton or other natural fiber. And of course, silk is always fun to dye. Medium to heavyweight plastic sheeting is important to protect your work surface. Also, you will be manipulating fabric, and in order to make that job easier, this type of plastic will stay on the table as you move the fabric around. I'm fortunate that I have my grandma's old enamel top kitchen table that provides a perfect surface to fold and scrunch my fabric. But if you don't have that, this sheeting will work perfectly. I also use this sheeting on all of my tables in my dye studio. Since 2011, I have used a variety of containers for ice dyeing. My favorite now are dish pans and cat litter pans. I've also tried a bunch of different racks, and these racks are now my favorite. They keep the fabric from sitting in the dye water. This has probably been my best purchase, and it's made ice dyeing for me so much easier. I absolutely love these plastic bins. The blue and green ones came from Dollar Tree. The beige one was from Big Lots. They really help to contain the ice. This is how they go together. The rack sits inside the dish pan or the cat litter box with the plastic bin on top of the rack. I use two different kinds of gloves, the thin nitrile gloves from, for all of my dyeing, except uh, for working with soda ash water. With those I use heavy duty gloves. Respirator or a dust mask is a must when working with these dyes. At least buy a dust mask to keep the dye powder from flying up your nose. If you are planning on doing a lot of dyeing, invest in a respirator. Soda ash is required to bind the dye to the fabric. If you don't use it, the dye will wash out. This can be purchased in the pool supply area of discount stores. You also need a bucket with a lid. The lid is important because you can reuse the soda ash water for later dyeing sessions. When the water level gets low, you just add more soda ash and water. We are using Procyon Fiber Reactive dyes. If you've never used them, you will be amazed at the colors. I still get excited every time I use these dyes. There are three companies that I purchased from, Jacquard, Dharma Trading, and ProChemical. I have used all three and have not seen any differences in their results. For your measuring spoons, remember once they are used for dye, they can't be used in the kitchen. Dharma Professional Textile Detergent is what I use to wash my fabric prior to dyeing and then to wash out after. It's a good alternative to Synthopol. I use Blue Dawn for the soap soak after rinsing. For my ice, I purchase bags from the local grocery store or gas station. I put my ice in the cooler while I'm getting ready to dye. I use regular garbage bags to cover the dyeing containers. It keeps warmth in and nosy people out, including me. You could also use some lightweight plastic. This is for keeping track of what you are dyeing. I cut Tyvek into labels and then use a Sharpie to mark on them exactly what dye colors and what amounts. Then I staple 
the labels to the fabric. You'll see in my dyeing video one of the labels while I'm rinsing out the fabric. And some miscellaneous supplies. Old towels. I don't like using paper towels, so I recycle the towels that we used in the house to the dye studio. Container for water that I use for uh, rinsing my measuring spoon between dyeing containers. Water spray bottle. I like to spray any dry dye that is sitting on the ice. I use rubber bands if I want to keep folded fabric together. You know, sometimes I use them, other times not. So that's all for the supplies. Don't forget to download the supplies PDF and also my supplies checklist so you can have everything you need to get started.